a virtual aquarium, a farm in the sky, and a mysterious vending machine that won't take cash, join me for a tour of all the secrets hidden in Osaka Station. For the first secret, we need to start at the South Gate, and from here, just take a short walk down to the Daimaru department store, and then take the lift up to level 16. Walk past all the restaurants, and you'll soon reach Taiyo no Hiroba, or Sunshine Plaza. Of course, when I visited, it was decidedly less than sunny, but it's a great spot for the views of the city below. Bring a drink or a picnic if it's better weather. From here, just go back inside and head down the escalators to level 13, the secret number two, which is an enormous Pokemon Center. There's pretty much everything you could ever need as a Pokemon fan here, so I don't recommend coming here if you've got a train to catch, as you're probably going to miss it. Now, to get out of this department, store, you might expect to just go down to the ground floor, but no, this time we're exiting on level 5, which leads onto Toki no Hiroba, or Time and Space Plaza. The name is a bit of a play on words, as Toki means time, but here they've chosen the Chinese characters for time and space. The area is effectively a bridge over the train platforms between the north and south buildings, and there's a gold and silver clock to mark those directions. The plaza also has a small cafe bar over in the corner where you can have some Italian food and a drink as you sit back and watch the trains coming and going below. And if you continue walking across this bridge you'll get to this escalator going up. Make sure you turn around to take in the sight of the epic steel and glass roof overhead as you ascend. And if you're not afraid of heights there's also a fantastic people watching spot on the way up. And at the top of the second escalator is Yarawagi no Niwa, a traditional Japanese style garden that includes carefully laid out rocks, moss, and a stone lantern. The name means peaceful garden, and it's a popular spot for workers in the station to come to to get some fresh air. And if you continue climbing up through the building, and yes, there are quite a few staircases involved, you'll get to the 14th floor and Tenku no Noen, or farm in the sky. This rooftop farm allows members of the public to get involved growing herbs, small fruits, and various kinds of vegetables. And there's even a small vineyard here. Farming activities go on throughout the year, so if you do visit, let me know in the comments what you found growing here. And if you're having fun on this tour, let me know by giving this video a like. To get to the next secret, we need to head back down in the north building to level 9 of Lequeur, where we find a huge bookshop that literally runs a ring around a coffee shop. Unless you come here at opening time, you'll need to have a good strategy to secure a seat, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find a more stylish branch of the ubiquitous coffee chain in Japan. And anyway, what's not to like about a donut shaped bookshop? For the final couple of secrets, we need to head down into the station proper, and first of all to platform 11. If you're travelling north on the Thunderbird Limited Express, you should know that JR doesn't sell food or drinks on board, which is why on this platform there's this incredibly handy branch of 7-Eleven for all your snack needs, and for meals there's a bento shop further along. The next secret is over at the Umekita exit, which means heading underground for a bit of a walk. The new part of the station is where other limited express trains come in, such as the Kuroshio which goes down to Wakayama, and Haruka which connects Kyoto and Kansai Airport. The platforms have these distinctive tall doors that run from floor to ceiling, and have flashy new information panels but up on the concourse is where you'll find the last three secrets. Over on one side is an enormous display wall featuring a bubble clock, light art, as well as a virtual aquarium. It's an absorbing way to pass a bit of time if you're waiting for a friend or a train, and you can even choose the presentation you want by pressing on the panel. Also on this concourse is a vending machine that sells bento boxes, something I've never seen anywhere else in Japan. It's unusual too in that it doesn't accept cash, so you'll need a credit or IC card to take advantage of the lunch boxes in boxes here. And don't worry if you get here later in the day, because I'm reliably informed that the company running the vending machine restocks it at regular intervals. And this brings us to the last secret. It's a rather space age looking ticket gate. Not only do you not need a ticket, you don't even need an IC card here, because the gate 
scans your face to figure out who you are and charges your account accordingly. Funnily enough, I didn't see any passengers using the gate like that, but I did see some people touching their IC cards on the pads instead, which makes me wonder how long this gate will actually be here for. I hope you've enjoyed exploring Osaka Station with me. If you did, you'll definitely love this video about Kyoto Station, but for now, see ya!